Good standing by our coverage begins as soon as we're done here. But a lot more to go. 323 left. South Carolina, two timeouts. And Sean completes it to Ellington. Tackled quickly by Jake Ryan. Plenty of time. But again, it's Michigan's three-man rush and maximum zone coverage. Somebody in this Wolverine front as a pass rusher needs to deliver. Frank Clark, number 57, I think is their best pass rusher. You see him at the bottom of the screen. One of these Michigan Wolverines has to get after Connor Shaw. And he miles the back. It was Ellington's first catch of the day, by the way, John. He led this team in receptions this year. Pressure comes, Shaw stepping up, nowhere to go. Step into a sack, bent backwards by Jake Ryan, the defensive playmaker for the Wolverines. They lure you to sleep. Three-man rush, three-man rush. Then it's going to be a boundary blitz, and they overload you, and they're one short, and down goes your quarterback. But it's been a great combination of maximum zone and spontaneous blitzes that have helped Michigan get back in this football game. 2-14, two timeouts, clock running. Is this four-down territory, South Carolina? I believe it is. Third and 10, Rory Anderson, the tight end, loads the formation left. Shaw looking that way, throwing that way. Got his tight end, but he didn't catch it. Let's see, it. Uh, it's ruled a catch by the line judge. Now the umpire's running over. I don't know if they're going to keep this complete or not. Let's see. Conversation, line judge, field judge, umpire. They say it's a catch. The clock's Rolling on the running. field is a catch. Forward progress, and the runner's knee was down. Fourth down. And the clock's still spinning. The play clock's moving as well. I wonder if upstairs will buzz down to take a look at this. Rolling on the field of a completed catch. We're going to further review. Well, 17 seconds ran off. Yep. I didn't think there was any way this was a complete catch. Looks like it. He was down. He, he goes right down on his bottom. He's got the catch secure, and the ball's punched out. That's a catch. Yeah, briefly, but clearly, once his butt hits the ground there, it's, the act of the catch is done. But it, as we said, it's fourth down and three. And I think that's the issue with Steve Spurrier right now as he huddles with his Carolina Gamecocks. Ball's on the left, hash is fourth down and three. I'm sure he's getting the information from his coaches up in the press box. After further review, ruling on the field is confirmed. Completed catch, fourth down. It's only fourth and three. It's 4.30, so a reminder, I'll be tuning in for the Rose Bowl pregame presented by Vizio. That is over on ESPN2. So pregame show, the Vizio pregame show is underway on ESPN2. And we'll join everybody out in Pasadena as soon as we're done here. Fourth and three, South Carolina has two timeouts left, Michigan three. Trips to the field. referees who become like play callers they're covering their mouths and we can't tell what they're talking about nobody's trying to steal your signals a lot of great replay <laughs> challenges here in a second <laughs> after this game we need to try to check the time on the game clock here there should be a little more time left Second of the game clock from 130. It is fourth and three. South Carolina. Connor Shaw, the quarterback. Two to the right, one to the left. Needing to get to the 40 to keep it going. Michigan brings pressure. Shaw throws. It is caught. Ace Sanders first down. Who else? The 43 yard line. Gutty call. Blitz, all-out blitz by Michigan. You play one-on-one -on -one coverage, and guess who they go to? Ace Sanders against the safety, and Gordon's no match. 
Sanders and Nick Jones near side. Ellington to the top. Final minute of this outback bowl. As Shaw, nowhere to go. Wrapped up. Try to throw it away. Sanders able to catch it at midfield. The clock runs. South Carolina should take a timeout. And they do at 51. South Carolina is charged with their second timeout of the half. A couple of seconds on the clock there. Spurrier was getting it on the far side. I think the official from that side is going to tell the referee to reset the game clock. Please reset the game clock to 52 seconds. 5-2 on the game clock. Credit to the side judge, Mark Windham, for getting that right. I'll tell you what, the biggest concern I have if I'm South Carolina is what if I have to kick a field goal to win this game? It's one thing Steve Spurrier told us yesterday. We don't kick a lot of field goals. We score touchdowns in the red zone. Well, you know what? They've had one field goal blocked, and they clearly missed one bad earlier in the ball game. They're 0 for 2. I don't know exactly where they need to get this ball to get it in range, but I don't care where they get it. They have to be uncomfortable if they have to kick a field goal to win it. Saw the earlier struggles of Adam Yates, who was 11 of 15 this year and made a 51-yarder against the Gators. South Carolina down to one time. I remember they lost one earlier today when they challenged that spot. Just in Michigan territory. 52 seconds left. Shaw's pressure. Shaw's in trouble. Spun around. Shaw alive. Sanders got it first down. A Sanders at the 43-yard line. Jabril Black was so close to a sack. Limpin, Gibby, Shaw. Sanders is hurt. Corey Robinson, the left tackle, gets beaten badly. And all Jabril Black has to do is open up his present. He's got Shaw. For a clear sack, he just can't finish the play, and he does an excellent job finding Ace Sanders for a catch and run. Sanders has caught the last three. That's what you were talking about, John. For all the world, it looked like the junior from Cincinnati had his third sack. But Sanders has been so huge offensively in this game and in this series. And uh, as they look at Sanders, Shaw also in discomfort on the sideline. Can't say enough about Connor Shaw today. He's run for 96 yards. He's thrown for I don't know how many yards. And, and Dylan Thompson, the other quarterback, is in the game right now. And Sanders sitting up. But Dylan Thompson, who threw a touchdown to Ace Sanders earlier today, and also hit a big play down the seam. Connor Shaw limping around. Comes over the sideline, as does Ace Sanders. So here's Thompson, the sophomore out of Bowling Springs, and said, you know, anytime he'd go around, it was, boy, you're a South Carolina quarterback. Now it's you won the Clemson game. What a big deal. That is. No back set. There's seven seconds left. It's Thompson now throwing sideline complete. The 40 yard line to Kenny Miles. Michigan just does not have a pure pass rusher. They've had to use the blitz to get the pressure they need. Black number 55 at the bottom of the screen. Somebody in the whatever you call it, maze in blue, Mike, has to step up right here and rush the passer. So receivers left to right. Dylan Thompson off the bench. Scrambling. In trouble. Thompson keeps it alive. Gets to the sideline. Gets out of bounds. At the 40-yard line. Maybe just inside of it. It's 26 seconds left. With third and about seven to go. Our Michigan fans have to be losing it. That time James Ross has a chance for a wrap tackle. They just haven't been able to finish. And right now on third down with this ball on the left dash, they expect Dylan Thompson to look for his big tight end, number 87, Justice Cunningham. They love these seam balls to the wide side of the field. Pressure on. Thompson hangs in there, throws underneath. Demir Bird has it. Bird's got a first down at the 32. 21 seconds left. Quick 19 screen. as they stop it. They're going to clock it. They do with 17 seconds left. Again. As John mentioned, Yates has missed two field goals today. From 33, he was wide. From 42, he got blocked. Connor Shaw, who gutted it out through a lot of pain in this game, cannot finish his drive with nuts. Can't be on the field for his closing drive, but he had the first half of it. 
and I'm expecting Michigan to blitz to try to knock Carolina out of field goal position. This is hard on Dylan Thompson, Shaw's replacement. You're coming in the middle of a bowl winning potential game ending drive. That's well, a good thing he played earlier. Michigan rushes four. Here's the pressure. Thompson got hit as he throws open. Complete touchdown, Ellington! Unbelievable. A zone blitz. They don't pick it up. And Dylan Thompson ends Michigan's day anyway. What a great throw. How tough are these South Carolina quarterbacks? Thompson, he's limping off the field. But when you blitz, you still have to play coverage in the back end, and Michigan has failed to do that in some critical situations today. What a throw by Dylan Thompson. South Carolina will take its final timeout to set up for the two-point conversion, trying to go up seven. Bruce Ellington with the touchdown. It's a blitz at the bottom of the screen. They drop the defensive end. It's a zone blitz. Nobody's in the middle of the field. They blow the coverage, and Dylan Thompson stands in the pocket and makes a great throw. Ellington has the easiest touchdown he's had all year, but if you watch Dylan Thompson in the pocket, it's his ability to stand in the face of pressure and make a great delivery. It happened six times on that drive. That time was Brian coming straight at his face. Taking the shots on the blitz from Ross. Thompson took the hit. Shaw in pain. <laughs> Lips down the sideline. It's like tag team wrestling. <laughs> you go as long as you can and reach out of the ring and get your teammate. And Dylan Thompson just jumped into the ring for Carolina and finished Michigan. Fourth lead change in the last 14-51. Now South Carolina goes for two. Dylan Thompson looking. Throwing for Ellington again. Ellington doesn't get it. He was challenged by Courtney Avery. And a flag is called on South Carolina. For offensive pass, pass interference. interference. Offense, number 23. Penalty's decline. Extra point is no good. Decline that penalty. Extra point's no good. It's a five-point game. Just a quick thought on Ellington, who made that play. Ellington, as we mentioned before, South Carolina fans know this. He's the point guard of the South Carolina basketball team. Frank Martin, who was the coach of Kansas State, now the South Carolina coach. John and I were both talking to him before the game. He said, we have practice tomorrow, a quick run in the morning, then in the afternoon at 3. He said, Ellington will be there. He'll practice. That's the way he is. That's the kind of player and individual he's been. He's been so good for those two quarterbacks and has what could be the game-winning touchdown. The only thing Michigan can do now is have a desperation return. I know they have something in their game plan where they can get a desperation return of some kind. However, if Carolina squibs the ball, fall on it immediately, do not waste a second and give Gardner a chance to create with his arm. But if this ball is kicked down the field, there's going to be some kind of a desperation return. And the desperation play Michigan works on, trust me, the last Michigan game I did was December 28 of 05. It was the Alamo Bowl. The score was almost the same. It was 32-28 Nebraska over Michigan. And Michigan threw 11 laterals back and forth down the field and almost scored a touchdown as players from both teams were on the field. So it's definitely been part of Michigan's preparation throughout the years. We'll see how the South Carolina team kicks it. Who gets their hands on it? Dorfleet's been desperate to get the ball in his hands all day. Adam Yates with the kick. The bounce picked up. Trying to get the most out of it here is Gallon. He'll just get out of bounds at the 32 yard line with seven seconds left. For Capital One. Player of the game. Jadavian Clowney after it went against South Carolina on a measurement that looked to be an incorrect call. Clowney forced the fumble, turned the game around, and he's just been as good as advertised. Yes, he has. And 
Be a great time for Clowney to take the game into his own hands right here. Seven seconds left. South Carolina has four players, now five, lined up on the other side of midfield. You see if Michigan takes some yards early and then tries to stop the clock. Kevin Gardner stepping up. This will be the game's final play. Gardner had the ball knocked out of his hand as he threw. It falls incomplete. And South Carolina has back-to-back 11-win -back seasons for the first time in school history. And the head ball coach beats Michigan the first time he's ever played the Wolverines.